Okay, today I'm going to be showing you how I do the chunky ear flap hat. It's a great, quick, fast, easy knit, and it's perfect for little boys and girls. Um, and you're gonna need size 11 DPNs. Um, I don't recommend the magic loop method for this because once we, the, the hat is knit from the top down, and once we separate off for the ear flaps, having the DPNs is gonna be helpful because we just leave our stitches live on the DPNs. And so um, Magic Loop, I don't think it will work as good, but if you are determined and you wanna do it that way, then that's totally fine too. You're gonna to have to figure that out um, on your own, but I use DPNs and so that's how um, it'll be. But you're gonna want um, some super bulky yarn I've used uh, Malabrigo Rasta before, which is always fun. And then Lion Brand um, Woolies Thick and Quick um, is what these two are here. And those are always good for kids, especially because, you know, they kind of run around and throw their hats around and stuff. So, all right, well, let's get down to the pattern. This pattern is available on my website as a instant digital download. Um, it's also available on Ravelry, Lovecrafts, Etsy, um, just search for Industrial Whimsy. You can also purchase it from my website as a booklet like this, where you get nice quality paper and you've got the pattern there. So um, yeah, let's get started. So first thing we're gonna do, and the beginning is always a little fiddly because we're going from the top down. We're gonna cast on six. Let me do that again. Okay, then you separate them. This is the fiddly part. You're gonna put it on two, three, needles, right? And you're going to make sure that your stitches don't get twisted. So the way to make sure that your stitches aren't twisted is to make sure that this cast on edge, they're all facing the inside. Okay. So you're going to split those onto three needles for now. We are going to end up using all five needles. And then we are going to increase every stitch by knitting front and back. So using our fourth needle and yes, it's a little bit fiddly. It's only going to be fiddly for one or two rows. Just try to concentrate on your two needles that you're working with, knit front and back. These larger needles are pretty forgiving. Um, I like the longer needles because they don't poke me in the palm with the shorter needles. You could probably use the little flex tips. I don't know if those go up to these larger sizes, size 11, but that could probably work too. See, look, we're already getting more grab there. Oh, I pulled the wrong needle. It's all right. Just put my stitches back. Um, I keep all my mistakes or like my, my little mess ups and things on here because I want you to see that you know, my knitting doesn't go perfectly all the time and I just, I adjust, I fix my mistakes. That's like the number one thing you need to learn when knitting is how to keep going, not start over, not everything, you know, necessitates you starting over every time you kind of drop stitches or mess up. You can find your way back. <laughs> This is a knit row, so we're going to knit those. Okay. 
And I have um, chosen to use this yarn here that has all the fun colors and everything already in it. I love when I'm doing a simple pattern like this to use a yarn that is fun and does the work for me. Um, and this pattern is a great basic framework for you because what you can do is once you learn how this goes, then you're free to, you know, add in stripes or put little cables down the sides, which I've done um, in some of these. I've, um, you know, you can use that funky art yarn, you know, and it gives it all kind of fun textures and sparkles and all kinds of stuff. So um, it's a great way to just kind of learn the basic shape and what you what you want and then start jazzing it up and start adding your own kind of fun stuff to it. So this row is going to be a knit one, knit front and back to the end. So remember we're going from the top down. This is the very top of the crown. This pattern is um, originally originally created for my kids and so there is some tips for sizing it for a small kid like you know under seven uh, or under five you know and then a, like seven to eight year olds or you know older than 10 kind of a thing um when in doubt make it bigger because their heads they grow pretty fast so if it's a little loose this year, it'll fit perfectly <laughs> next year. And then I um, also can wear the larger kid size myself. So if you wanted to even make it bigger, it's very easy to basically just keep going. You're increasing from the top and you're making it bigger. And so um, I like that it's top down. Um, so I, you can try it on. So you can try it on your kids. You can try it on yourself, your husband, whatever your wife and, um, you know, your friends, everybody, your neighbors, <laughs> and, you know, see, see if you need to keep going, see if you need to keep increasing and making it wider, if you want to, you know, need to make it longer. And, um, so it's a easily, easily adjustable pattern. Um, and it used to be called the kids ear flap pattern, but I just changed it to uh, ear flap pat because it, I mean it really you can fit it on anybody um, and you can adjust you can adjust it the pattern itself is very basic but you can make it fit your needs okay this is a knit row there it goes You can tell that you've done, if you kind of lose track, okay, here's a tip. If you kind of lose track and you don't know if you've just done an increase row or a knit row, you can look here. The knit front and back will give you a purl bump. So I know that I have increased my past row and I know that I need to knit this row. On a knit row, you won't see that. You won't see that purl bump. They'll all be flat. See there, there's that pearl bump from my knit front and back. So that was the increase row and this is the knit row. So now I see that I have the pearl bump. Okay, I need to knit that row. Reading your knitting with chunky yarn is a lot easier. And once you're able to read what you've done, then it helps you figure out where you are what you need to do next. Okay, and you can see that the top of our hat is starting to take shape. And we're just gonna keep doing that. Um, we're gonna do increase rows and then knit rows until I get to the size that I want. So I'll be back.
Okay, so I have gotten to the end of row 14, well, row 13, really, and um, and I've done all the increases, and so I've got, so this is uh, the very top of the hat, and so this is the width that it's going to be, and my needles are getting full, so I, we are going to, on this next round, we are going to make sure that we have, um, that we kind of split them up and into the fourth needle as well. And so um, what you really want is to have 12 um, on each needle. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12. So I'm gonna move these guys over. If you wanted the hat to be wider and it needs to be wider, so um, you can keep going. You can do another increase round um, and then see, you know, if that if that works better for you. Um, but this is a pretty good. This is going to be like the the widest part of your of your head, really. So um, then, when you're doing row 14, you're going to knit all the way around and rearrange them to fit on your four needles. So we've got there and there. We are going to use our fifth needle. And so you should have an even number of stitches on all four of your needles. And this will help you, you can, since they're more spread out now, you can really see just how wide it is. Um, and you know put it on top of your head <laughs> or a kid or whatever and see if that you know gives you that hats are pretty stretchy and uh, so yeah that should give you what you need and then we're going to just um just keep knitting in the round and depending on what size uh, you want to make it now we're doing the depth right so We've got from about the middle of your head, right, the widest part of your head, and now we're going to go down um, to um, the forehead part um, before we bind off um, for the ear flaps and for the front of the hat and the back of the hat. And so here, let me. So we've done here. We've got our, all of our increases done. So this is where we're at, and then we're going to just knit in the round, um, just keeping it straight down and depending on this is the this is the one that fits me so this would be the bigger size and so I did like 16 rounds um, so just depending on the depth of the forehead and stuff like that like I said you can always try it on kids have like a smaller depth you know so you would have you know probably just a few inches like an inch smaller um, but there's not too much difference between the sizes so like I said if you're unsure do a row or two extra um, just to give them that room to grow if it's for a kid if it's for an adult um, I would say just make the largest size add an extra row just depending on uh, what you you know the person if they're you know a medium or a large or whatever um, so yeah so I'm gonna go ahead and knit in the round and then I'll be back to show you guys the uh, bind off when we bind off the front and back and start working on the ear flaps that will be this way at this point it is helpful to mark your beginning of the round um, 
with um, just a little stitch marker and something that you can put on and off because um, if you use the tail it's the tail has gone around so many times that it's not an accurate uh, gauge of where your beginning of the round is now so you want to mark that with one of those removable stitch markers you can find some on my website actually so. I have done my knit 16 rounds all the way so I've got the, the body of it if you lose track of where you are um, in your rounds then I have a way for you to tell you see this pearl bump here that's one of our increases right so you can see all your increases happening along there okay so you go to your last one and then we knit a row even and then you can start counting one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and then the one that i just did that's on the needles is my 16th round so that's as far as i'm gonna go on this and we are ready to do our first um, heel flap ear flap <laughs> not a heel flap this is not a sock <laughs> okay so what we're gonna do is bind off twelve stitches so basically we're just gonna bind off one needle if you have this and I'm passing the stitch back and this kind of gives a raised brim um, so that I didn't want it to lay flat and curl up on you so that's why I'm doing it in the purl because um, I wanted to give it some kind of edge if there's a different bind off method that you prefer to use, you are more than welcome to use that instead. It's your hat. So we're going to set that aside. Do one more like this. And then so see it kind of gives you that that edge there. And of course when you you can always steam block it. This is um, this Lion Brand has acrylic in it so you don't want to um, use an iron or anything with it but you can puff some steam at it and it'll block out it does have wool in it as well so then we're going to knit these We're going to bind off this needle.
I think it probably took me 30 to 40 minutes to do the, the body of the hat. So this is definitely a project that you could get done in the time of a span of a movie. Um, great for last minute gifts or if the weather suddenly changes and you checking out the forecast and you think I'm going to need myself a hat. Well, here you go. Pass this one over. these two. Okay. And then we're going to knit these 12. Okay. So now we have our two live ears <laughs> that will soon become ears and front and back okay so you're just going to leave one of these sides alone and we're going to work on the first ear flap Them. And we're going to be doing the decreases on the wrong side. Until you get to the last three, then we're going to slip two. Pull them together. Okay. Then you're going to, if you prefer different decreases, if you want to decrease on the right side instead of the wrong side, you can knit across one row and then do your decreases on the other side. It's up to you. Um, you know. You are always able to modify if you don't like something, but this is just kind of the way that I worked it. Your flaps don't need to be very big. always do that. <laughs> so we're going to keep doing this. Knitting across and then decreasing. And that's going to give us all the way down to the point. So I'll do that. Okay, so you have four stitches left. You're going to knit. Together. Those two. Okay. Put those together. So now 
you're going to leave yourself 10 to 12 inches of an end. It's not an exact science. You can leave yourself more just to be careful. And pull it through here. And I'm going to leave a little bit of um, a loop there because what I want to do is actually add some of this red yarn from what I'm going to put in the pom in the pom pom, and I'm going to put that also in here, and it's going to be part of the braid that I'm doing. So let me make sure I've got that in there. Okay, and you can, of course, do this any way you want to. Um, if you want them all to be the um, same color, you can do that. Just cut a length of the same color and work it in. I just wanted some red at the bottom as well. You can add in, you know, some scrap yarn that you have. Like this has like blues and teals and yellows. So... I could add in some of that as well. And you're just going to braid that down. And I like to finish up the whole side of the hat while I'm here before I move on to the other ear flap to the other side. And I like this because really there's only going to be two ends to weave in for this hat. Okay, so I've got both ear flaps done. I wove in the end that was there and I made my ties. So what's left to do is the top. Um, and with this end, I normally just tuck it in because I'm gonna actually attach it um, when I do the pom-pom. So on this hat, I actually got a faux fur pom-pom from the yarn shop where you just attach the bottom and then it has a little button, really. And that way you can like interchange them, whatever. It's a little bit easier than making your own and attaching your own. Um, but otherwise, you make a pom-pom, and I'm using this little clover tool, and you usually buy them in sets of three, and it comes apart like that in the middle, just in case um, you need to know how to work these if you have never worked with one before. What you do is you wrap your yarn around and you're going around both edges and you want to wrap a lot a lot a lot a lot of yarn because if you stop here you're going to have a very flimsy scrawny pom-pom and pom-poms are meant to be big and fluffy so i'm using the largest of the set there's like a medium one and then a small one. Um, I just think it looks cutest on this hat since it's a bulky hat. And I wrap and wrap and wrap until you can't wrap no more. And it's nice and full. And you close it on that side and then you bring your yarn around. Let me in. Wind this. Bring your yarn around. Keep wrapping. And you can mix in other yarn colors if you want to. Like if you wanted to use some of this yarn and do, you know, do like 
Oh, let me wrap some of this and then wrap some of the other one. And there's like actually like art pom-poms where you can make heart shapes and all kinds of stuff. I mean, there's lots of cool things. So just search for like pom-pom art here on YouTube. And there's lots of cool little videos and things. Today is just basic. Something that you can use as a springboard. Then you close it like that. And then you use this groove and you want to have a nice sharp pair of scissors to go through all of it. Okay, my phone cut off the ending of me doing this, so I wanted to make sure that you saw it. But we're cutting through the pom-pom after you've wrapped it and closed it up. Make sure you keep it closed nice and tight. You don't want to let these little contraptions open up on you or you're going to lose all the, <laughs> all the loose strings. So go through that whole groove. Make sure that everything has been cut away. Okay. Then you're going to get a length of yarn. And you want it kind of long because you're going to tie it off several times and then use it to attach. So if you're going to use a single ply yarn like the Malabrigo Rasta, um, and when I tie it in here, I, you're going to see I'm, I'm going to pull it really tightly and then tie it and retie it. Um, single ply yarn does not handle that very well. Um, because the more you pull, like it's just going to come apart, like it'll just pull apart. So you might want to use a different yarn or a different kind of string, something that's a little bit more sturdy, plied yarn, um, cause single ply has the tendency to pull, just pull apart cause you're just putting too much pressure on it. So you're just going to take that piece and put it right through the middle of the contraption, pull it nice and tight. And I, what I do is I tie it really tight, as, as hard as I can without breaking the yarn or pulling apart the thing. Then I bring it around to the other side. I do the same thing, tie it tight. And then one more time over to the other side, turn it over. Tie it up. And then I usually double knot it, just in case. Okay, so that's what you should have. And you'll see it might be coming open. So then you are able to open it up. And you take it apart. And then just hold it by the ties and give it a good little shake. And you can see all the little long pieces start to pop out and it'll probably be a little misshapen that's totally normal so you're gonna give it a trim turn it trim it however you want to shape it just kind of work at it Until you like the way it looks. Pom-poms are supposed to be fun and just kind of crazy. So that's what your pom-pom should look like and you're ready to attach. Now we're ready to attach the pom-pom. So I'm going to show you how I do it. Um, I'm going to do my best to make sure it's secure with bulky yarn. I don't really use a tapestry needle um, but you can. So you see your cast on here, you got a tiny little circle here. So I stick one edge through the outside of the circle on one side. Then I stick the other end on the other side. 
try to get it in a good spot that it's gonna keep the whole thing you kind of want to space it see then I flip it and I take that end that tail and I make sure it's underneath and I just secure it with a couple of knots and I check it if it's too floppy like if it goes to one side or the other you might need to widen the base of the of the two ends that you put in there and then Sometimes I also put it through again a little further out just to give it again a base so that it's not super floppy. Kind of widen its stance of the pom pom so it sits. Like I said, I don't really use a tapestry needle on this part, but it's up to you. There we go. And then you can trim your ends. And you've got your ear flap hat. All done. Ready to be super cute on somebody for yourself. In fact, let's see how that looks.